Hey guys, I'm back. So yesterday I took the day off. I did a lot of stuff around the house and I hung out with Axel. It was super hot yesterday. So honestly, you know, we did like small spurts outside and then we would just come right back inside because it was super duper hot. So, um, I'm looking for my sunglasses. I need to go buy Blue Mercury. So I figured I would bring you guys with me because I'm going, blah, blah, blah. let me leave those over there. I'm going to try to find the tray set that I've been talking about because today is hair washing day and I would love to be able to try that out when I wash my hair. I don't blow dry my hair or anything. At least I try not to just because I kind of, I don't know. I don't even know if it makes sense, but the way I kind of look at it is I've used the flat iron. So if I cannot blow dry it, then it kind of saves 50% of the heat damage. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense, but either way, that's what we're doing today. I'm trying to fix my silly shirt. So anyway, I also wanted to, wanted to thank you guys for all of the messages that I've been getting to say thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. And yeah, so it was nice to take off yesterday and just relax. Today during my lunch break, I got one of those um, watermelon mojito smoothies that I've been talking about so much. They're so good. I really need to try to figure out how to make them at home and save myself some money. Sorry, I need to put these on so I'm not like squinting. Oh, so today I went down a rabbit hole today that I've not been down in a while. So let me tell you guys something that fascinates me. And I think because there are so many questions that surround it, that's kind of where some of the fascination comes from. So let's talk about the skincare brand, The Ordinary. I'm sure most of you guys know all about The Ordinary. They are, they are an affordable skincare brand. A lot of their products are single ingredient or just a couple of ingredients. And when they came out, they were sort of one of a kind because not only were they affordable, but it also allowed the consumer to really tailor a skincare routine that was their own where you could take their you know one of the cleansers that they had and then you could also pair it with their matrixyl serum and their rosehip oil or you could swap out the rosehip oil and use argan oil it was just a little bit of a different design than what we had seen. And Decium is, the way I understand it is Decium was the parent company and it had Noid, The Ordinary, and Hylamide under Decium. The creator of Decium was a gentleman by the name of Brandon Truax. And if you guys know about Brandon's story, then you'll already understand why I'm so fascinated with it. But basically Brandon was a, uh, he was Iranian. And when he founded Decium, I think he was in his mid thirties. I'm pretty sure. I don't know the exact numbers, so give or take. He was he, I think he was in his mid 30s. And really really smart guy, extremely intelligent. 
and you know he had a strong presence on social media he especially had a presence on Instagram and I remember following him you know this was obviously long before my YouTube channel or my um, my you know existing Instagram was around but I remember following him and you know over time he started to post some strange videos and sometimes I just kind of you know I kind of write it off because I figured you know I don't know what he's talking about and it's just not a topic that I'm well versed in so I would just you know move on to the next thing then I noticed that he would talk about decium a lot and then it became that um you know Estee Lauder ended up investing in decium and he was saying that there was financial fraud and he was shutting down decium this is the final post of decium which we will shut down all operations until further notice because there was fraud and all of these shady characters and all of this kind of stuff. I'm giving a very brief overview, so the things that I'm saying don't take it as like the word or anything because some of these things I might have mixed up or something. So I'm gonna link some videos down below if you guys are interested. These strange posts on Instagram would become a lot more frequent and more confusing as time went on and I would sit there and like I said initially I was kind of like okay well I don't know what he's talking about let me you know move on or whatever maybe it's not for maybe it's not for me to understand and I would move on to the next thing but as they became more and more frequent it was kind of like my my antennas went up a little bit and I started to really instead of paying less attention I started paying more attention to what he was saying and I was very confused by it and there was a video that he did from his uh, condo and he was talking it it was like it was a message for um, uh, President Trump and he was saying all kinds of weird things and then he was saying how he was under the influence of alcohol and there was just some really weird stuff being put out onto his Instagram. Mr. President, it's Brandon Truex. You said your country absolutely has to be prioritized first. I'm in my penthouse. Uh, you may have seen it. Most likely haven't. It's 3203 33 Mill Street and when I got in the elevator, the, the elevator rang and the fire department and basically beep, beep, beep um, after I called first to make sure that it's working because everyone, a lot of installations have occurred at the distillery district. But like I said, instead of ignoring it, it made me focus on it even more. So consider all of this. I'm, you know, listening to these really bizarre statements and at a certain point, I got really concerned for his mental health, and there were people in the comments that were calling the authorities. What I didn't know was that he had already been in a mental hospital to try to get himself some help, and he was discharged after uh, two weeks. So, you know, there were people trying to help him and all this kind of stuff. So all of these things are happening and it's, um, it's really a combination of being confused, frightened, scared for him, and also interested in what he was trying to communicate with his audience. 
because even though I didn't understand some of the things that he was talking about, I was still, um, I still wanted to hear him out and I wanted to listen to what he was having to say at a certain point. You know, keep in mind that this is a man who was the, you know, creator of a very successful skincare company. His skincare company was sold on Beautylish. So this is someone who was very well known in the industry is what I'm trying to say here. So imagine my surprise when one day, I think it was in 2018, I open up my Instagram and I see a very confusing video from him and very shortly after, I don't think it was the same day, but it might have been within a day or two after that, another confusing video from him and news breaks that he has committed S, allegedly. And all these people are on his Instagram talking about it's a conspiracy theory and that's not really what happened. And there are all these people trying to figure out information of, um, you know, how did this happen? Who was responsible for this? Because that's not really hap what happens. And people are just like irate. The really odd thing about this is you would expect that someone who's well known in the industry and has made a name for himself, this would have been, you know, plastered all over every news network, every, um, you know, beauty blog and everywhere. How could everyone not be talking about it? But after this happened, things just fell silent. And, you know, I, I guess I say that just to say his story has perplexed me since it happened. And I actually saw that Cassandra Bankson talked about that on her channel a while ago. So I will link her video down below. And... I'll link a couple others that I've watched too, but his story is just one of those things that is just so confusing to me on so many different levels that someone, you know, something like that could happen and you just don't hear anything about it. It's just like they're gone, like they never existed. You know, it's not like he passed and there were, um, you know, conversations about mental health and what a, what a profound, uh, person he was and the things that he did for, um, the, the skincare industry, you know, I'm sure you guys, I'm sure at least a few people watching this video use at least one product from the ordinary I'll guarantee it because the ordinary is so widely used and so widely loved they're affordable they're sold in Ulta you know they're obviously sold on other websites too now but I remember when the only place that you could buy the ordinary at least that I knew of was either through Desium or through Beautylish so anyway that's one thing that definitely perplexes me. So if you're interested in going down the rabbit hole of Brandon Truax and hearing about his story, I will leave some videos down below. I was watching some of that today. And then something else that I've watched a fair amount, and I watched some uh, new documentary yesterday about it, is about Jonestown. Now more of you guys will probably know about Jonestown because it was you know, the biggest, they called it, I think that it was in United States history. I believe there were 990 casualties. This happens in the seventies in, uh, Guyana at the hands.
hands of cult leader Jim Jones. And there are many, many, many documentaries about Jonestown and everything that happened before, during, and after the Jonestown, um, you know, massacre. So that is something else that I really, um, I really listen to a fair amount of documentaries about Jonestown and every time I watch a different documentary on Jonestown I learn something else or I hear from someone else that might have been a survivor or someone that was in Jim Jones um, inner circle and I always uh, learn something else and that is definitely something that has kept kept me can I speak it is definitely something that has kept me very intrigued. I remember I learned about Jonestown not in school. Nope, not in school. I learned about Jonestown because probably about eight or nine years ago, my boyfriend and I were looking for a, we were looking for something to watch on TV. And just so happened to come across a documentary that was about Jonestown and it was I, I shouldn't say it was a documentary because it wasn't it was actually more like a um, um, movie but it was like a made for TV movie I hope that that makes sense so it was like a made for TV movie and I was absolutely, I'll put the title on the screen if I can think of it. If I can't think of it, I'll ask him what it was. But um, it was just crazy. It was the craziest thing. And I was so intrigued and so kind of like glued to the TV that immediately after watching that, I started doing my own research and I, you know, looked at stuff on YouTube. I looked at stuff on, um, just on blogs, on news sites, all this kind of stuff. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know about Jonestown, but wow. I mean, Jim Jones and the lifestyle that he led. It's so sad to think about all of those people that were fooled by him and the people that were just take advantage, taken advantage by him all because they were good people and they were willing to listen to whatever he had to say. It's just so sad to see how things um, ended in, in Jonestown. And, you know, a third of the people in Jonestown were children. <sighs> just a really, really sad story. So if you're interested, I figured I would share this today because I've recently been down those rabbit holes again. And if you guys don't know about Brandon Truax, I figure that would be interesting. And if you're, if you know of Jones, if you know of Jonestown and you want to look further into it, then you can do that too. But um, either way, I'm going to go to Blue Mercury and I will be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So instead of getting the tray set, because I don't do like blow drying, I remember when I was getting my hair cut, she said that the tray set is really good for blowouts, but I don't do that. So, um, and it's not even me trying to be like, I don't do that, but I try to save some of the heat damage since I use my flat iron. So I opted to refill the Orbe um, soft lacquer. I really like this. And this is amazing for flat ironing. So it says this high gloss flexible finishing spray delivers a patent sheen with the softest touch, the perfect polished top coat. It can be left untouched for a lacquer finish or gently moussed for light texture and shine or used with heat with hot irons for a sealed in shimmer. The way that I've used it historically is spray it on my hair and then do one pass with a flat iron and as you can see I was also testing 
some like nudie pink lip pencils, but I couldn't find anything that I liked. I, I will always highly recommend the Orbe styling products. If you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, if you like higher end hair styling products and you have it in your budget to splurge or even if it's just once in a while where you can treat yourself, I would highly recommend at least incorporating one Orbe product into your routine. Even if you start with a conditioner or the Super Shine moisture cream is great or one of their heat styling products or hairspray, whatever your routine needs, I would highly recommend uh, treating yourself, make the investment. I love their products so, so much. So anyway, guys, I know that this was a different video, but I really wanted to talk to you about um, Brandon Truax and also the Jonestown, um, you know, kind of rabbit holes that I spend a lot of time in. I figured it would be, um, you know, interesting and different. And tell me, do you guys know about Brandon Truax? Did you know about his, you know, alleged S? Do you have other thoughts about it? What do you think? Do you think that it was a conspiracy to get him to stop talking? Was Estee Lauder involved? What are your thoughts? I want to know all about it. And then let me know what you think, think about Jonestown too. Were you alive when Jonestown happened? Were you a child? Were you not even, you know, here when it happened? I'm very interested in that as well. So make sure you tell me down below. But either way, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.